What is up everybody, welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach and in today's video we're answering the question of how to capture an image from a webcam using OpenCV's, or Pyth OpenCV and Python. Um, so without further ado, let's just hop right in and start showing you how you can leverage and use a webcam and OpenCV to get your images. So to start out, you'll obviously need OpenCV and if you haven't watched any of my previous videos um, that I'll link somewhere in the video, wherever this is, I'll link. Um, essentially, you need to install it, and you'll install it using uh, pip to your the Python package manager. Essentially, all you have to do is pip install, and then you'll open cv python. And with that, uh, that should help you install it. I don't need to because I already have it installed. Um, so once you have that installed, you can go ahead and you can import cv2 into your script, and then we can leverage that. Now, to first be able to get an image or capture an image from our webcam, we know how to need to know how to use the webcam. So how do we do that? Well, um, OpenCV actually has a, uh, we're going to create a variable that we're going to assign this to, but it has, if you do cv2.video capture, this right here um, allows you to essentially capture video. Now, what this will also allow you to do has this, this constructor has multiple things that you can pass into it. Um, so you can pass in a file name. So if you have a video that you want to replay uh, essentially through OpenCV, you could pass that in. Um, you can also do an index, which is what we're going to essentially do where like if I do index zero, this tells me to leverage the webcam and to use the webcam, um, for our video capture device essentially. So I'm going to, you have to use this. We need to assign it to a variable. So I'm going to say video capture or vid video cap or vid cap, um, is equal to that. Now we have this device, so how do we go about using it? So with this video capture device basically set up saying that, hey, we're gonna use zero because that is the index. I only have one webcam, right? On my laptop, there's only one webcam, and so essentially that is just gonna be index zero. It's gonna pull around. If you have multiple, you can put different, you know, num values here, index values here to represent, you know, I wanna pull from camera two or camera one or, or whatever. But ideally, if you're on like a laptop that has an integrated kind of built-in webcam, index zero is going to be your the, the way that you can grab um, the video or the webcam to pull from. So how do we capture an image? Well, th this, this video capture, um, if we hit, uh, the dot, the IntelliSense from VS Code will tell us here's all these functions that we can do um, and use within this this object. Well, essentially, the one that we're going to focus on is this read object. So if we click, if we hit read, essentially um, you can read in, you can pass in images, or um, like ideally, oftentimes I just use just nothing. I don't really pass anything in. I just do read like this. And then what this is going to return uh, is going to, as you see here, it's going to return a tuple, like a Boolean object and a mat-like object. So what the Boolean object is going to be is like a true or false, I read this just fine. Um, and then the mat object is going to actually be your image. So if I, what I often do is I often do something like I say success and uh, image, or you can do frame. It depends on what you want to do. Uh, a lot of people when talking about uh, videos, they often do a frame. Um, and then you just say that is equal to video.read. Now, if I go ahead and run this, uh, everything should work just fine. Um, and you'll see that it's gonna go through and everything worked. No, there was no errors, nothing like that. So, but nothing showed up obviously, right? Like you just saw the command line go and nothing happened. Um, now, if we want to view essentially this frame, we just kind of go back to one of my last videos where we're talking about displaying, we'll pull that information back in, where I'm just gonna say I am, uh, or cv2 dot, I am show. And then we, again, we have to pass in the name of the frame that we want to put it on. And we're just going to say webcam. And then I have to pass in the actual image that we want to show. In this case, it's frame, right? So if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it probably is going to end up just closing or something, you know, you'll probably see something maybe flash real quick or whatever, but nothing happens again because we're not doing something like cv2.wait. Um, and I'll put a zero in here and I hit this again, which you'll see now is me making a silly face because I, that's the face that I made at the instant that that, that frame was taken. So this used my webcam, but how do you know that this used my webcam and I'm not just loading an image? Well, again, um, we are using the capture device. We're saying grab from the webcam. And then we're also saying read one frame. So when you hit read, all it's gonna do is essentially just read once. It's not gonna give you a stream or anything like that. 
So this is essentially how you can capture an image, a single image from your webcam. Now, as this photo made to, made to note, if you're just gonna use it for one time, make sure that you're actually giving it a good quality image or the image that you're looking for um, and not this, because otherwise you might end up with a uh, face like that, I guess. Uh, but now I just hit the key on my keyboard and that basically closes the program. Oftentimes though, you will want to do something like um, CV2, or no, excuse me, vidcap.close or release, I believe it is. Yeah, vidcap.release. And then also you'll end up wanting to do like CV2 dot destroy all, um, destroy all windows. This is just a common practice, a good practice to kind of clean up the files uh, or to clean up, you know, your video capture and everything like that. So it all shuts down and closes nicely. Essentially, this will just release the webcam from being used. And then the destroy all will just make sure and you know everything that OpenCV popped up, it'll end up closing it out at the end of this program. So that when your program exits, you don't have anything lingering around or anything like that. So again, if I run this again, and next time I'll try to make a better face. Um, so if I go and hit run, you'll see there it is. Just like that, I have a, a smiling or a better, maybe a better picture, I guess, but probably better than my like confused scowl look that I had on last time. Um, but essentially, that's how you capture an image from uh, the webcam using OpenCV. TV. But what happens if we want to stream the web webcam? What do we do? So streaming a video is very similar. Like we just took an image with the last stuff that we just did. And now to stream a video, we're just essentially going to reuse a lot of that. But what the read function would do that I didn't mention last time is it'll just take the current, basically stream or at that instance in time that it called read, it'll just pass that through. So to continuously get our stream or all of our images that make up, because essentially a video is just a, a bunch of frames uh, put all together that make up a video video, right? Um, we just need to call read a bunch of times. So what often people do um, that's common in the community is essentially you'll just see something like while true, or you can also say something like while vid cap um, dot is open or dot opened is opened. Yeah, there it is. So you can do something like this as well. Um, I typically just, just do while true. Um, then what we're going to do is we're just going to indent this stuff. And we're gonna do a check because oftentimes, and this is probably what I should have done last time, is you probably wanna do something like if success, then you want to do this, right? Um, otherwise, if something comes back, like you get a read error in the frame or something weird happens, um, then you don't run into some error. It just kind of like will go through the while loop, right? Um, and then you probably wanna do something. So yeah, if success, you know, read our frame and, and do it. Now what this will do essentially is this will constantly wait uh, and this will make it so that every time um, we run this, we essentially have to hit a, a thing on, like as you can see, it's frozen. But now if I hit a key on my keyboard, then now you'll see that I, as every time I hit a key on my keyboard, that it's it's updating the image show. And that's not necessarily what we want, even though like I'm hitting really fast. So I'm trying to keep it like almost as if it's real time, but I'm constantly like, if I take my finger off the keyboard, that you can see that I'm still talking and that's not talking anymore. Um, and that's not essentially what we want um, because now like we got to exit and it's just, you know, kind of kills everything. Uh, it, it, we didn't set it up right, essentially. So I'm gonna control C that, um, kill that right there, get that closed. Um, essentially what you're gonna wanna do is, you're gonna say, wait one second, because, or at least like a minute, or I think it's either a second or millisecond, I can never remember with this. But then we're also gonna compare it, say, and if um, is equal to essentially this kind of uh, hex string, what, now, what this is going to do is either wait one second and continue, um, or uh, if this, if this bat, and then and that with this value. So if I waited and someone hit the letter Q, what we're going to do is I'm going to put if here, if this, and someone hits the letter Q while I'm waiting, um, what we're going to do is break. And what that'll do is essentially kick us out of this while loop. And now we have a nice way to exit because last time what I had to do here is I was hitting Control C, wasn't really closing. I then hit Control backslash, which does an automatically quit and kill like. It's like kills it faster, essentially. Um, and that's what ended up killing the video to help us get out of it. So to avoid a situation like that, where maybe control C is not working, and I have to go to control backslash. Um, I'm just going to do something like this, where, which is always good to do is put in, Hey, you know, it's either going to wait. And, and if it's just waiting, it's just going to keep going through this while loop and keep updating. But if I'm waiting while I'm waiting and someone clicks the letter Q on the machine or on the keyboard, then we'll exit out of the program. So now if I run this now, this time, what you can see is, Hey, look, everything is running real time. I'm hitting a key on my keyboard and I'm hitting a bunch of keys and like, you know, L J Q, the arrow keys, nothing's moving. I hit Q boom, just like that. It's gone. 
Um, and that is essentially how we can turn our just our video, like just an image capture from the webcam that was reading in just at, you know right when you hit play uh, or right when you hit start of the program where it captures one image. Now we can stream our our basically from our webcam using Python. And now with this, you could use things like um, you could apply like AI stuff. So maybe you're doing face detection. You could apply like um, open or uh, image processing or uh, yeah image processing algorithms to do whatever you want to do. Maybe you want to put a filter on anything like that you can now put using that filter as you in somewhere in here in this code is where you use it because you'd apply it to the frame and then reshow the updated you know frame or frame with filter or something like that but you can essentially this is the basics of how to stream a video um, and I guess you'd also want to actually pull this out and now that I'm thinking about it is because you don't want uh, sorry I was just looking at this you know mind shift uh, I was looking at this this was indented in here and you don't ever want your way to break out to only be if it's if it's success if it's a success you also want if there's errors that this would still work so i could still run this the same um and you'll see that it's still running and we are now streaming from the webcam um and not just taking a single image like we were before. So I hope this video has provided you value. If it has, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions that further talk about, you know, how we can leverage this webcam usage with OpenCV, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any other additional questions, I do have a Google Forms link below, which you can go fill out and ask all the questions that you have. Um, and that helps me, one that helps me understand what exactly you guys are looking for. Um, so that way you can answer your questions. I can make, or you can ask your questions and I can help make videos on those to help you progress further in the journey that you have to becoming a developer or learning a specific language or learning a specific technology. So um, if you have any questions, you can also just drop a link or just fill out that form below. But until next time, keep on programming.